Hey guys, what's up? Before we watch this vlog today, I just want to remind you to go sign up for our email list at recentrefuge.com. We have some new and exciting things coming soon like merge drops as well as some other announcements and we want to make sure that you are the first to know. It doesn't cost you anything. You'll get two emails in your email box every week telling you of articles and updates, videos that you may have missed, different seasonal tips and tricks as well as maybe some poetry and other lovely things. We want to be able to be connected with you as our viewers directly, not dependent on any other platform to be able to reach you. So please go sign up for the email list if you aren't already. And now let's watch this vlog. Hello there, little darlings. Welcome back to Return Refuge Farm. I just pulled these artichokes off the plants in my high tunnel. They're probably a little more spread out than they should be. I should have harvested them a little while ago, but I was doing like a strict carnivore challenge for a month and um, I wasn't eating any plants. Now, the diet that I am trying to see if it works is doing about 85% carnivore and then eating about 15% fresh fruits and vegetables out of my garden. Um, I have still found that I do better without grain, sugar. Um, I would like to try a little bit of our A2, A2 dairy from our cows uh, in the form of maybe like ghee, but I don't expect to be able to do a whole lot of dairy. Um, we'll see, <laughs> but I'm going to try to eat these artichokes. I had a viewer suggest to me when I mentioned steaming artichokes to try roasting them. So this is my first time to do this. Um, they had given me some very basic instructions. Just Googled it to find some more instructions. So I cannot recommend the way I'm about to do this, but I'm gonna put some lemon juice, some garlic, and then wrap these in foil and bake them at 400 for until sizzling about one hour and 20 minutes. So we'll see. I don't know, I got a bunch of artichokes out there growing on my plants. I'm really excited to try this. I want you guys to know that your suggestions are very valuable to me. When you share your recipes with me, when you share your gardening experience, um, it's very valuable to me. So I'm gonna put some lemon juice on these, some, um, some oil, wrap them in foil, and stick them in the oven, and we are gonna go outside. When Jackson was little and uh, I bought artichokes for the first time and I steamed them and then I did I clarified some butter and we dipped them in butter and you know what, what you do with an artichoke is after it's cooked you peel off the little leaves and you eat the meat of the heart um, off the leaves and anyway Jackson for years when he was little he'd be like mom you remember those dip them in butter things I'm gonna say anything with artichokes, that's what I think of. My little baby age will be like, Mom, you remember those dip them in butter things? And now he's man sized and I can hardly even handle it. My baby angel. <sighs> Turning 18 this year. You don't see this. All of this is horseradish. This is growing because I had a bed here that had horseradish in it and this grew down and these are from tiny little roots that were in there. And I'm actually going to dig some of this up and go plant it somewhere, probably like at the edge of the woods and just let it go crazy. But I do not think that I will be planting this at all in the garden, realizing how tenacious it is. I don't need this, uh, this tenacious growing in my garden it can go grow in the woods it will obviously be okay because there was a raised bed here with horseradish in it we took it all out and that's just from the little fragments of roots that went down into the ground isn't that crazy so here's the per the pergola that i've been talking about how we're going to move we're going to disassemble this and move this up to the in ground garden and probably secure some shade cloth over the top will had even suggested maybe like fixing some sort of fencing on it and doing some trellising on it wouldn't that be cool just without the gardens out here, we don't need this. I thought about putting a table because we're going to do Jeremiah's shop over here. And that's where we're going to host like farm classes and stuff. And I thought about doing a table outside to do outdoor dining. But honestly, I think we're just going to do any sort of dining that we host for classes and events in the community room of the shop. 
and I'm going to take that pergola and move it and I'm going to plant that big old fig tree. I got this really cool massive fig tree. It's not massive currently, it's small, but the variety is massive <laughs> um, and I want to plant it out in front of the house because eventually that house will be like a guest house and I think it'd be really cool to have a huge, it's supposed to get like 15 to 17 feet tall and the fruit is supposed to be like baseball size so I think that would be really cool to have out in front of that house once that pergola is gone. Y'all, it is the golden hour. Oh, I just breathe it in. These are the moments that I wish you all could just be standing right here next to me and feel the romance of even the light on this farm in the evening. Here are Tilly and Ramona. Hey little ladies. Hey little ladies. Hey cutie girls. <laughs> What's up, darlings? Oh, you ready for your close-up? Oh, you are! You're ready! <laughs> so, let's see. That is... Uh, that's Ramona. This is Tilly. Tilly's smaller. I really love seeing the little lambs out here pasturing. Um, so, we have two St. Croix ewe lambs. Uh, we bought them to be breeders and I'm hoping to get a few different kinds of sheep but we're wanting to pasture some some sheep behind our cows as we get all of our rotational grazing in order and I just I bought these because they're this heritage breed that I happen to see for sale um, available in the fall and I went and picked them up probably a little prematurely but um, they've been no trouble at all to keep. They're growing really well and we kept them in the barn over winter and now that the grass is growing we've put them out on pasture. They're really sweet. They're hair sheep so they don't have to be sheared. Oh she's got her halter slipped down off her face. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch her. I might have to wait till Maya's here and have his help. We just need to take that thing off of her. It's too big. We've already fixed it once and then she slipped it down again. I just want to take it off. Let's come over here with the heifers real quick. Hello girls. So we put the steers back out on pasture. Now that they're fully weaned and they're not going to be draining their mamas. And here we have our four heifers. So here's Hallelujah. She was our first Jersey heifer born here, right here. Hey, beautiful girl. Hey, beautiful girl. Hello. Um, and then these are some of our Devon heifers. Um, this one we were a little concerned about because she's really, really tiny. Uh, but she's starting to grow, so we're just going to let her grow out, wait and see. One of our cows, which is her mom, is very petite, so it may just be her genetics. Uh, but she's actually the same age as this one next to her. So this is Jenny, and I have considered Jenny for like a milking prospect, but she's not broken. She's not like halter broken. And she'll come up to me when there's a fence in between us, but she was already... I think like seven or eight months old when she came to us and had never been handled. So I may just keep her mom's next calf, but she's pulled. She doesn't have horns. And as far as milking a Devon, I think she would be a really good uh, prospect because she's one, a beautiful calf, but she also doesn't have horns, which I really like. And then this is Raylan. Jeremiah's cousin brought her daughter Raylan to come visit us in the fall. And Raylan had just been born. She wasn't Raylan then. And um, Jeremiah, he is a sucker for a little girl, let me tell you. I just, I, I guess after having all the boys, like, he's just, he's just, he's a sucker for a little girl. And Raylan came, which is his cousin's daughter, who is, uh, gosh, I think she's kindergarten, first grade, something like that. And anyway, she was so thrilled that there was a calf and Jeremiah took her out and she was like, what's her name? And he said, I think we should name her Raylan. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we ended up with a calf named Raylan. And uh, she's just recently weaned. So she's been hanging out at the fence a lot, um, which is sad, but shh. We got to get her off her mom because at this point there's a very good chance that her mom is bred back and we need to give her a chance to recover. So she'll be okay. 
So yeah, these, this is the heifer yard. Now I do have news about one hallelujah. She is a beautiful girl and we have actually decided to sell her. Our friends Charlie and Lisa were looking for a Jersey um, heifer and uh, they have a Devon bull and hallelujah is just a couple months shy technically she could be bred now best practice she's mm -hmm. a couple months shy and uh, they are actually going to purchase her because we are we really don't need any more dairy cows mm -hmm. and we thought that we were going to get fern and freya and just sell them but jeremiah's gotten attached mm -hmm. and he said he would rather go ahead and let go of hallie and keep fern and freya so Thankfully, she gets to go to a family that we love, that are local, that we'll get to see her. And we know that she's going to be in really good hands. And we'll, we'll be sure to share that process with you guys whenever they come to pick her up. They actually, Lisa messaged me today, and they actually also purchased from my friend Hannah, Hope's mom. So they're going to have very similar jersey lines as us, because they're going to have Hope's mom and Helen's baby. So, it's kind of cool. All right, so there's something out here I've been wanting to show you guys. When the weather is bad and my kids' schedule is crazy, I feel like I don't get to shoot the content I actually want to shoot. I feel like I end up just sort of flying by the seat of my pants and showing you what I can when I can. But there is a project out in this barn that I'm very excited for you to see that Maya and Wes worked on. Um, they built it a couple weeks ago. So if you'll recall, I had hatched some chicks out a couple weeks ago. Um, let's see, they hatched Ben's birthday, so March 6th. And then the very same week, our chick order from Murray McMurray Hatchery arrived. And our friend Wes just took them to his house because we have a bunch of barn cats and barn cats and baby chicks don't mix. And Wes had him at his house in the brooder, and then the guys built a mm. brooder stall here so we could keep chicks safe. So let's go in and see it. So Maya launched his YouTube channel this week so that he could share projects just like this. You didn't get to see this one, but you'll get to see ones in the future being built. Look at this. They just decided that it would be beneficial since we will continue to hatch and brood chicks, we'll have meat chicks, we'll have different birds that we need to protect from these monsters. Um, they decided to go ahead and just enclose an entire stall as a brooder room. So let's go in and see. Got a little carabiner here locking it. Hey, tiny babies. So we still have the heating plates in here. Might not be necessary. They're getting pretty feathered out at this point. Let's see. Oh, he already filled that up. And they still have food. It's in the evening, so Maya's already done the chores for today. They've already been cared for. But yeah, so this is obviously a lot of birds. These are my little, um, let's see if I can see one. Okay, here we go right here that's one of the chicks that i hatched my copper moran's mixes they have feathers on their legs uh, and they hatched the same week as our order from mcmurray came so they're all about the same age which was nice we got to mix them together but yeah we have this whole room now it's completely enclosed from predators so we don't have to worry about either barn cats or any other predators getting to any birds that we're brooding it's a large space it's 12 by 12 and this is going to enable me to hatch even more birds to provide chicks for sale here for our local community this is pretty cool huh this was maya and wes's idea and they planned it out and i was very very thrilled by this another thing that they did which i thought was incredibly clever i'm in the stall right here so this barn had the space for 10 stalls, 12, 10, 12 foot stalls. I'm getting sidetracked. We'll come back to this, but, um, and you can see here, like here's a regular 12 foot stall, which this has a door that goes outside to an additional 12 foot that's outside. And this is useful for all kinds of things. You know, we, we would put a kid and goat in a stall like this. You don't have to have a barn, but it is definitely nice to have. Here we have a double stall, which has a gate that closes. 
And that's where when we have like a cow calving, we could put her in there. Our last two dairy cows have calved out in the field. The weather was nice, it didn't matter. But this was really nice to have when it was 24 degrees and Helen was having hallelujah. We went ahead and put her up here because she had her in the middle of the night on the coldest night of the year. And we were really glad to have a barn. The other calves, they're fine out in the field. That's the thing with a barn, they're nice to have. But they're not fully necessary for a lot of things. But they are super nice for things like this, building a brooding stall. One of the stalls, Jeremiah converted into our feed room where he keeps feed, tack, medicine. And another stall, he converted into the milk room where we process our Jersey milk every day. So you see all this stuff in here, the jars, the fridge, dishwasher, you know, function. This beautiful room has made my kitchen so much easier to keep clean. But you know, we got the sheep and we've been letting them out on pasture. And prior to that, they had this stall. And the thing with cows is, like, they don't really need a barn. Like, you give cows a barn, this, they're still going to stand out in the rain. They, they, they do not care. They're completely unbothered by the rain. Now, if it is storming, we'll open a stall and let the cows come in. And about a third of the time they do. Much of the time they just stand out on the storm. Cows are largely unbothered by weather. We are more bothered by the weather for the cows than the cows are bothered for themselves. But sheep really need to be able to get in and be dry. I mean, at least from everything that I've read. And that's how it always was for our goats. So the guys actually came up with this. They built this in the gateway of the stall. So the sheep can get in. They can come in under cover. They can access their water that they can reach and their hay. They can come in and get out of the weather, but the cows can't come in. And uh, I thought that was really clever also. So the, these guys still have access to their little space in the barn where they can get away from the other animals and get away from the rain. Are you talking to me, hallelujah? <gasps> Look at that, she just snubbed me. I know you're going to a new home, but I love you still. I do. I do. You're beautiful. You know, we go all winter with this gray and bluish dreary light. And maybe some people don't consciously recognize the light. And maybe it's just the photographer in me because, you know, I was a photographer by profession for years before I did what I do now. But when the light in the evening turns golden, it just sets something ablaze inside my heart. And I always feel like crazy thankful. Living on a farm was literally just the, the greatest dream of my life. When I used to imagine what it would be like, I could not imagine this. This is so much more. I would, I would romanticize the idea of a big red barn and maybe like a family cow and a little garden and a handful of chickens and what it is now is truly just mind-boggling but there's something about walking around the farm in this golden evening light that just takes that and just phew, explodes it the reason why i love to shoot videos this time of day update you guys talk about much of nothing maybe share a tip here or there is because if i could bottle the feeling of gratitude and fulfillment that I feel and give it to you. And more than anything, if I could bottle the hope that I feel, because like, there's no reason why that this should have happened for me, but it did. And it truly makes me believe in infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. And I've shared that over the years. I share that your prayers matter and your hopes and your desires matter. And that being committed to the process is fulfilling. And I love getting to take these little walks with you because I just have to believe that something about my heart exploding, that there's some seed from that that might get spread, sown into your heart. And that maybe, maybe you could find yourself in this position one day. I hope you know, I really, I really hope that for you. Fraulein was just running around, a calf loosed from her stall. A little calf joy is about as great as it can get. And I relate right now. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time. So beautiful. Hmm.
You're a sweet girl, you know that? Miss Freya. Y'all don't tell the others, but Freya's my favorite. She's so sweet. Now she's gonna headbutt me and make me regret I said it. <laughs>